So if you're an off-site or remote student who's not able to come to class this week, you started last week building your tetrahedrons or your tetrahedron. If you're gonna be testing at home, you're gonna need to build four of these. So you would be following all these steps to build your tetrahedron. I also put a video up in how to get that built. So you'll watch my demo video. So you'll need four of those to test. We then would be at a place where number six on the lab sheet is um, you're gonna set the tetrahedrons on a piece of paper and decide how you want to set them up so that you can support a bridge deck made out of cardboard the same size as the notebook paper which is eight and a half by 11 or 20 by 30 centimeters so you'll have to cut one of those uh, cardboards out for that and then you will have to find some books or something that's a consistent mass so that could be something from your garage and you're going to place uh, them on top of your deck one at a time until the bridge fails. So we're testing the tetrahedrons to failure. So at this point, uh, let's go ahead and look at number eight on your lab sheet. So turn to this page and on number eight, it says form a hypothesis. So in this particular lab, we're, our, what I really would like you to do is draw a picture hypothesis of where you'd like to place your tetrahedrons and you're going to actually guess how many books or how much mass you think your uh, tetrahedrons will hold. So I'm going to show this to you on the board as if this were what you're drawing right here in this section. Okay, so right here you have this number eight and you're going to, on a blank sheet of paper, you're going to be setting tetrahedrons where you would like to place them. Okay, so they can be anywhere on here. You just have to decide that's your hypothesis. Once you decide where you want them, you're going to draw them uh, just on your piece of paper as your hypothesis. So let's say that you decide that you want um, one in the center and you need to draw your triangles big enough so that you can actually get evidence drawn on them. So then I have three more. So I might put one here, one here, and then one here. So I have placed my four so that in the center it doesn't collapse. You might decide that you want yours out here. Maybe you want yours out here on each corner. And that's fine too but whatever your prediction is you have to sketch it on number eight okay some people wanted theirs um, bisecting each uh, edge of the paper so that their triangle bisects the middle of the paper and their edge of their triangle is parallel to the edge of their paper like that. Some people may have decided they wanted their triangles bisecting, but they wanted the point of the triangle facing the edge of the paper. So you have to be mindful of, you know, what you're doing to place that before you test it. Okay, so let's say we may stay with this one. So these will be placed on there in their proper arrangement like you planned and you want to trace around the triangles bef before you test them so that we have a way to know where they were because when you collapse them to failure they might move in the collapse okay so 
get them get them on your prediction where number eight is we want to draw them in 3d looking to or we're looking at them 3d but drawing a 2d top down version so start at the center connect your points because we're going to this uh, piece of paper is going to be our evidence of what happened then you're going to write over here to the right or to the next part of your number eight and you're going to predict how many number of books or whatever you're using at home it's going to hold <clears throat> So you have a prediction there. Okay, so I am not showing the top of this because there's a whole bunch of data here. And we need your data to finish off our data before we analyze at the end and write our conclusion. So at that point, you're gonna take your cardboard that you cut out and you're going to place it on top, put your books on top, count five seconds between each mass that you're adding to your bridge deck before you add the next one and then to failure. So uh, you can, you're gonna go ahead and test it and record it. Once you record it, you're gonna write that down on number 10 on your paper. It's gonna say, how much did your bridge hold? How many books? Then at number 11, could you, uh, number 11 says, or 11 is, uh, 11 is actually recording how many books it held. And then number 12, examine your supports and look for possible bridge failure. So in this particular scenario, you might have had the straw band on its collapse. So if you see this one, uh, you can see that the straw bent right here. You can see that bend when it collapsed, but you can also see that these were very loose and you also have a bend in the straw right here. And so how do you show the looseness, like the loose knots and the, the bent parts of your structure? That would be whichever one that was, when you lift it off, you would carefully examine. And maybe that bent straw was here and here, and the loose knot was here, and some of your other ones had loose uh, knots. And if you looked at this evidence on the board, this particular crime scene or you know, arrangement to predicting what happened without being there and looking at it. I might guess that this bridge fell this way when it collapsed and it may not have even collapsed completely. It just, the structure just went like that. That is showing evidence of predicting, looking at your evidence, what happened. And so you have to record it so that we have uh, evidence of that as a whole class. So that would be number 12. Um, what would be the reason for this, where you're circling? Those would be loose knots evidence. These marks through your straw pieces are where they bent. So for number 12, look for possible causes of bridge failure, loose knots, and um, why would the structures bend? Those, the bent, Straws would represent the beams of a bridge and the knots would re represent the nodes of a bridge. Um, I think loosely tying your structure is probably the number one cause. Potentially, you have not exactly six centimeters straw lengths. You might have different lengths you weren't as careful at measuring. Could be another reason. Then you have to write whether your hypothesis was correct or not. So on number 13, did, your, did you predict the right number of weight before it collapsed? And how did you know? How did you know it held that? What was the reasoning? Well, basically this is an observation lab, so you can write observation or you observed it. Number 16 then says compare and contrast. 
study the pictures of the bridge in your textbook or your handouts I gave you on the I-35 bridge collapse? How does this uh, represent or compare to the failure of that bridge? Your straws represent beams and your um, knots represent the nodes or the gusset, gusset plates and nodes. Number 15, what steps of the scientific inquiry did you use in the scientific um, experiment? And you're looking at this list. They give you a list if you forgot. And you're looking through it to see which ones of those that you completed in your um, investigation. So that goes on number 15. And then uh, the second part of 15, what did you do? What would you do next if you could do it again? to make the bridge hold more weight. So you would come up with ideas to do this a second time and try to make it a more rigid uh, or structure that holds more weight this time. So you're gonna write that on that second part of number 15. And then as a whole class, you can't do this part at like the very end conclusion because uh, we got to get all of our class data and then I will show that to you, um, which is really all this data that we're collecting and you can um, then write a conclusion. And then I will actually put a video up Thursday for how to write a lab report. And so you will have in Google Docs uh, an assignment to write your official lab report on this experiment. Hopefully this helps. I know this is a rough way to try to do an experiment um, if you're 100% remote. So make sure you have your straws and your four tetrahedrons and your testing. Um, you can step on a scale with or whatever, add this book to a scale you have. Um, you might compare something of a known weight to something that you're using on top of your bridge that um, is similar, that feeling for you if you don't have a scale and um, kind of guesstimate what your masses are. So hope this helps. Uh, see you or we will talk to you through a video again and we will get that lab report written. So go ahead and get your tetrahedrons built and test your bridge deck and uh, get your data so I can see it. You're gonna, you're going to um, need to send me a picture of your data on here. Or you can ten, ten, uh, send me a picture uh, of your data that looks like this, okay?